yeah yeah what's up what's good it's your boy bq welcome back to the channel we're talking power moves here we're talking nwa power we're talking what are we a hard times four at this point i keep thinking uh hard times is going to be over i'm thinking it's a two ep two episodes three episodes four episodes looks like they're going to keep going next week so they must have done multiple days on this and i just wasn't aware i figured it was a uh, it was shot like one giant pay-per-view and i don't think that was the case because these matches are never ending not even AEW would have this many matches in a row in one day maybe i'm wrong i don't really know um but i'm enjoying everything they're doing right now we had another pretty solid episode one that i was not it was solid i'm not gonna say it's phenomenal it was one i wasn't excited about going into um but i'm gonna run through this one pretty quick i usually like to drop these reviews on saturdays i know it's like sunday night at this point that this is coming out i had my uh I had a military day on Saturday that really threw things off. So um, just wasn't able to get in. Obviously, there was the under siege pay-per-view for TNA that got involved as well. So this is coming out a little later than I would have liked. So I was really happy with the numbers on the last episode. It was the second highest I've ever done um, talking NWA power. So I was really excited. So the first episode when I brought power moves back was solid enough. Uh, the second one did not do well, but it was going up against uh, TNA Rebellion. And uh, then the third one, just really, really good. So I don't know how this one's going to do. We're going to see because it's dropping a little bit late. And, uh, you know, the card initially, I don't think jumped out as people, or jumped out at people. But, you know, we're going to get into this one time for your mind. I'm, I'm going to run through it quite, uh, you know, kind of quickly. This kicked off with uh, the kids versus the slime balls. And man, I, I've said this a few times. I have no interest in the slime balls. Like, I know they come from like Exodus Pro. I just think they're destined for the bingo halls. Like, I'm just not interested in the gimmick. The kids was not something I was really interested in as well. So, when they announced this match, and especially because this match was a rematch, I was like, fuck, man. Um, and I kind of have given them. A hard time the last couple of weeks of how they start the episodes whether it's the promos or the matches whatever you know this match kind of over delivered for me the kids actually got something i'm just i'm not a big fan of the name not a huge fan of the look but i think they got something uh they, they're gonna have to to work on their craft you know going forward obviously with how they want to ultimately present themselves on on TV because they're young, they're definitely young, uh, but you know they're they're better than I, w I was initially giving them credit for. And I'm going to say that about the slime balls as well. As long as they don't talk, I'm okay with the wrestling. I think the name is horrible. I think the look is horrible. But uh, you know, one of the things about the NWA is that they just they let people unapologetically be themselves. And sometimes that is hard for, you know, wrestling fans to accept because we've been very accustomed to over the years, you know, WWE overproducing people. And even some of the smaller companies, whether it's AEW or TNA, like I, they say they let people be themselves. But in, in some cases, I don't know that they really do. You can kind of tell that creative freedom is really here with a lot of these people in the NWA. But it's kept in check. Like Billy Corgan keeps it in check at the same time. I don't, I, I, they don't work for me. I don't like their, I just don't like their overall presentation. But when it comes to in the ring, um, it, it's not bad. And the kids ultimately won this match. And, you know, I, I will give it some props that this match was better than I thought it was going to be. When they announced it, I was like, oh, do I got to watch this episode? Kyle Davis interviews Austin Idol. After this, I have always been very, very annoyed with Austin Idol. It, you know, it, it's almost like they're trying to make him their Paul Heyman or whatever. Like it just, it never worked for me. He's, he has annoyed me from the day that he got on screen. I guess he's good at what he does. <laughs> you know, the company likes having him around. He annoys me. Uh, Kyle Davis interviews him here and, and Kyle was very good in this role. This would, this worked better than if May was doing it. Because, you know, he's letting him know we could see the end of Austin Idol tonight because there's the last call match between AJ Kazana and Anthony Andrews. And the winner, uh, their side gets to pick someone from the op opposing side to be gone from the NWA forever. 
So, um, you know, he's letting him know, hey, that could be you. And of course, Austin Idol has outrage. He goes, no, that's it, it can't be me. And, and, you know, Kyle Davis just using the sarcasm of saying, you know, I know you're wearing sunglasses. Maybe you need to get some real glasses or whatever to read the contract. That works for me. Again, I, I like Kyle Davis in his role. I'm not a big fan of his ring announcing. Uh, but I, in this role here where he's he's kind of subdued and, you know, it works. I, I think he's done a good job. I would rather see May on screen, obviously, but, you know, Kyle does a, a good job here. They are letting us know also that next week we're going to get um, the finals for the national uh, tournament, national championship. It's going to be Zion, uh, Latimer, Birchall, and Blake Troop. I am very much, very much, very much pulling for Blake Troop to win this thing. I think, you know, I think he comes off as a legitimate tough guy, legitimate badass on the screen, on the screen, uh, on the screen. I was actually really upset when he lost that submission match to Jax Dane several months ago. I think that was might have been during Saw Win, just because I actually like Jax Dane a lot. I think his finisher is bullshit, the uh, submission move. Maybe he puts me in it and I, I cry for my life, but it doesn't look like it hurts. And then you've got a guy like Blake Troop who has this arsenal of submission moves and loses the match. Like I just I was so bothered by that because I think they can do something very good with him. So I'm really hoping he wins this. And then what I want to see is um, the story for Birchall to eventually win it from him. I, th I think that would be more interesting than – than Zion being the champion or uh, Latimer at this at this point, I don't really have much interest in him being uh, the champion. We got after this AJ Kazana versus Anthony Andrews, and this is the last call match. As I said, there the winner gets to choose someone from the opposing side to leave the NWA forever. Stipulation was interesting. If it was just the match one on one, I would have had zero zero. If, if there's a smaller number than zero, like in the negatives, interest in this. The match was pretty quick. Like, if you blink, you missed it. They fought on the outside a little bit. Eventually, AJ Kazana just kind of hits a running power slam and, and gets the three count. I didn't see the three count coming because we're just so, again, you know, I always say NWA does what they want want to do. And oftentimes it's eh, but oftentimes it's also very refreshing, uh, especially with the finishes of matches. When I was when I was a kid, Jim the Anvil Nighthawk would have, one run, excuse me, one with a very similar power slam, the match would have been over. You watch some of these other companies, the matches don't end. They're, you know, flipping 50 times and uh, hitting every move in the book and, and getting their shit in, you know, so it's it's refreshing to see just, dude just hits a power slam and wins. Uh, I didn't want it to go any longer than this, but AJ Kazana got the win, and I'm sitting here like, please fire Austin Idol. Maybe he's just doing a good job of being a heel and getting heat with me. But I, as I said, I'm so annoyed by this guy on screen. It, it really turned me off from the Tyrus title run. I didn't really have an issue with Tyrus as a champion. I know a lot of people did. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I strongly believe that I hurt the company, but I didn't personally have a huge issue with it. I know he couldn't really go, but this company does things different. I don't, I don't know how to explain that anymore to people. Uh, but I, you know, I liked when he had Jordan Clearwater and Black Cheese and uh, Marcia Rocket was about around for a bit. Like I liked all these guys. I liked the act. But Austin Idol, um, and they had um, Cyan, and it, it just he annoys me. He annoys the piss out of me. Like I, I really wanted him to get fired here, and it looked like they were going to do it, and they ended up getting rid of Anthony Andrews. So I don't know how much heat that really got with the, you know. Maybe not heat's the right word. I don't know if the, the audience really cared. Uh, I'm sure he legitimately was leaving the company. You know, they're not, you're not just going to write someone off just to do it. And I don't think he's going to come back because he's not that big of a character. But, you know, I, I was entertained for what this was. Then we got, you know, speaking of Black G's, we got a little video package on him where he was talking about when he was diagnosed with cancer, he beat cancer. And then he comes back and he gets shot. I like Black G's a lot, so I don't know how they're going to use use them going forward. I would be, I would be pretty shocked if he wrestled with 
you know, going through what he did with cancer, he looks to be in great shape still. But going through what he did with that, getting shot, like I would just, I don't know, I, I would just be shocked if he competed in the ring. But he might, you know, he's over as big time over as a baby face now. So maybe he he manages someone. And there's a lot of managerial opportunities in the NWA, which is pretty cool. But um, but I do like him. And it was funny that I was just thinking about him prior to this when I was bringing up, you know, when I was writing in my notes about Austin Idol, like I specifically wrote Black G's and some of these other guys. So I was already prepared to talk about him. And, you know, they did this here. And this was a nice, uh, nice touch of the show. Main event for this program was a steel cage match. Knox and Murdoch versus the Southern Six. And they were represented by Alex Taylor and Kerry Morin. I love a good cage match. I love a bad cage match. I love a cage match. Cage, cage matches bring me back to a very young age. You know, watching uh, Superfly jump off the cage and watching Rick Rude jump off the cage and, and the Warrior and Hogan and King Kong Bundy and all these dudes. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm down for a cage match. And those aren't even the good cage matches in wrestling history. You know, like, if you go back to the NWA and, uh, you know, some of these older companies and the, and the territories, like, those were cage matches. You know what I'm saying? People leaving bloody and all that. Like, it was very gimmicked in the WWF. But uh, I think cage matches are a lot of fun. I've been wanting TNA to bring them back for a while. We haven't had one in about four or five years there. Although these guys are, you know, not necessarily any, I'm not necessarily a fan of any of them. Uh, Cage and, Mur uh, I mean, uh, uh, Knox and Murdoch, <laughs> say Cage, like Steel Cage. Knox and Murdoch have had a good story where they went from rivals, which I believe they wrestled in the cage, uh, to becoming a team. And this worked for Knox. You know, I never thought Knox with Cardona really worked, but, um, but this is they have they've worked as a team. They've found a way to get a lot of mileage out of Trevor Murdoch, which is insane to think about. Because no other company could have pulled can could have pulled off what they've done with Trevor Murdoch. You know, you you can't you can't argue that. And then Alex Taylor, Kerry Morin, I mean, these are very, very um talented dudes. They're more, you know, cruiser weights, but they're uh, very good in the ring. I'm not one of the reasons I'm not a big Southern Six fan is because I met um, Silas Young and uh, Silas Young. What the fuck? Uh, give me a second. I'm, I had to pause that for a second. Silas Mason, th Thrill Billy. <laughs> I just, every time I hear Silas, it's Silas Young to me. Like, I don't, you know, who would actually be really good in this company, by the way. But I met Silas Mason once. I met Thrilly Billy once, and he was just so in character that it it was awkward, you know. Like I just wanted to take a picture and get an autograph, you know what I mean? And he just kept like cutting a promo on me, and I eventually just kind of walked away. So <laughs> commitment to the character, but it, it didn't work for me as a fan, you know what I'm saying? So um, for that reason, I haven't like been the biggest Southern Six fan. Uh, and he'll he'll be on the show next week, so we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So the bell rings, uh, Taylor and Morton eventually try to escape the, the cage. Good good heel stuff, good old school heel stuff. I've never liked the stipulation of escaping a steel cage because what if you do just escape it right away? Well, you're, I don't know. Like I just think it should be a pinfall. It's kind of like a casket match. Like, what are you accomplishing if you win the match in the first like three minutes? You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, but, but for a steel cage match, I just kind of prefer that they, uh, they just, they'll just be a pinfall or submission finish, but it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, good heel stuff. And it was very, very standard for a little bit. Uh, it was very Knox and Murdoch heavy until Ricky Morton threw powder in their eyes. I thought that was a really good spot. I think I thought it came off. I thought it came off well, like a good, it was a good puff of smoke, you know what I'm saying? From this, um, this powder. And the high spot in this match, which is just something I love about the NWA, is that the high spots matter. TNA does a pretty good job of it as well. Instead of throwing everything, including the kitchen sink, at someone throughout a match. So the uh, Southern Six was trying to escape. They waste time. Knox climbs up there. And it's, it's the spot that a lot of wrestling companies do where 
someone gets underneath and power bombs you and the person who does the power bomb also suplexes someone but the reason this worked i think it was alex taylor that might have done it i, I don't want to i don't want to misquote or misspeak here one of them did a sunset flip uh basically and and performed the power bomb and then knox did the the suplex from there and that was a really awesome spot it was again a spot that mattered in the course of the match so i thought that was really cool and then you know ricky morin kept getting involved in this match eric smalls runs down and uh punches more into the balls and climbs the cage <laughs> i'm so afraid of heights and i'm of normal height i i gotta give props to eric smalls if you're not familiar if you're if you're just a, a fan of my channel and you're listening he's a little person um he comes off as a little more of a, a legit athlete though than hornswoggle you know he's not a hornswoggle character but he climbs over the top does a cross body block on both of them where i was i feared for him because as i said I'm, I'm deathly afraid of heights like it's not like a a gimmick man i i am i'm stupid afraid of heights probably why i would never be able to wrestle when i took my family to hawaii a couple uh years ago we were like jumping off a rock i mean this rock must have been 15 feet in the air into the water and i just i could not jump from it so um not that you care about that but the only thing unbelievable is that eric smalls took out both of them with a <laughs> flying body press you know that's just just a little bit unbelievable then rolando comes out and it's getting a little little bit of a shit show because we, we've got so many people running out and so many people on the outside when rolando came out i was like yo this company uses a lot of small people but they play their role very well it's not like um aw someone small but they beat the big guy like these guys play their the the role of their stature very well at this point trevor murdoch is bloody inside the ring southern six goes for the high low which is murdoch and knox's move they miss uh, they get the momentum back they hit the high low on the southern six trevor escapes now the story was that trevor tried to escape the ring earlier ricky morin hit him with the door uh, he tried to do the same thing However, Trevor Murdoch caught it, slammed it the opposite direction, and hit Ricky Morton, and then he escaped the ring. So, you know, not the not the greatest cage match in the history of wrestling, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was I thought it was pretty good, and I thought the episode was better than they typically are. Next week, we're getting a little bit bigger of a card. Uh, we're getting EC3 versus Silas Mason in the main event. So remember, he cashed in his his um, championship, the national championship for this title spot uh, title match so he's going to take on ec3 next week and I, I i'm actually shocked they haven't built this up through video packages or anything in the past i think they have a good use of video package good use of their time and maybe it's because it's an hour episode but sometimes from episode to episode they're going they have like a grudge match like they did with uh aj kazana and anthony andrews and i don't even remember why they're fighting you know so i, I do think they have to find a way to remind us of what happened a couple weeks ago like i like that they stretch things out you know i hate on wrestling companies where they have a storyline and then they fight the next week like they, they they stretch it out but sometimes it gets to the point that i kind of forget why they're fighting so i think they have to do a little bit of a better job um, because they haven't even mentioned ec3's name in a month on this show so that should be a good main event um, again there's the the four-way of troop churchill zion and latimer I really hope Blake Troop wins this thing. I want to see him as a champion in this company, and I want to see him as a dominant champion. And again, I think the story that can be really interesting is um, Birch. I said Churchill. I'm sorry, Birchill um, eventually winning this match. Paul Birchill. I think they're telling a little good story of his his redemption. You know, coming back into wrestling. That's what I want to see. I want to see him. You know. Uh, work his way up to beating Blake Troop. I just think that would be fun. And then we're getting AJ Francis, who I love. I love his TNA work. I am super excited about <laughs> this match against Brian Idol. Um, hopefully Natalia Markova is out there with him. Um, I think this is AJ's first NWA match. Like I know he's been, you know, signed on to do some matches for a while. I can't think of anything he's actually done. If he did, it was just an episode I missed. But um, 
I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it too. I'm, he's such a big personality that I think has helped TNA a lot. So I want to see what it brings to um, the NWA. But next next week's episode should be should be excellent. It should, it should be a really really good one. So uh, if you guys liked this one, I think next week is going to be much much better. So um, keeping it to 20 minutes today because the review is coming out a little late. But um, I am your boy BQ, and uh, catch me next week again for Power Moves. I'm out. Peace.